This may come as a shock to a lot of you, but I haven't always worked in golf. And Laura hasn't always um, wore a hoodie, so cool. Hi mate. We're in walkies. Yeah. Ooh, actually. He loves going on a walk, but get ready for this. Watch him. He hates it. <laughs> We're going walkies, mate. There is, this video isn't about... Now he's like, let's Hello everyone and welcome to Off Course with the Robinsons or the Robinsons Off Course minus the apostrophe which people keep telling me but I'm keeping it because I'm dyslexic and I don't really care that much. How are you? Fine, thanks. No car today? No, it's in the... Don't tell them that. Oh. I bleeped out what she said, but there's some fairly big funny news coming with the car. Uh, anyway, today we are talking jobs, careers, vocations. Some of them we're quite proud of. I love what I do now and I wouldn't have it any other way. Not another one. Oh, that dog. Right, we've run and put that in the bin again. I don't know what's wrong with him at the moment. But anyway, guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Laura, if people are new, what they got to do? Like, subscribe. And what are we going to comment today? Um, what was your first ever job? First ever job. What was your first, first ever job? So on that note, I'm going to kick us off. And my first ever job was a pot washer at, I think it was the Rosen Crown in the local village, the pub. And I hated it. I hated every minute of it. It was three How pound. Like pot washing? Yeah. Yeah. It was three pound an hour. It wasn't very nice. Now stay tuned because there's some, like I said, I'm quite proud of some of the jobs that I've had or do. And there's some that are a bit embarrassing. I'm not sure you know them all either. Probably not. So yeah, my first one was pot washing. I hated it. I like a lot of people start pot washing, then moved up to waitering, then chefing, and then like stayed in the industry. And I just couldn't wait to get out of the industry. I thought it was awful. But like unsociable hours, wasn't making good money. I was only 14, 15. I was a legal illegal worker basically. But um, what was your first job? Same illegal worker. Yeah. Um, do you think that's a Yorkshire thing or do you reckon it's just a... Maybe, but I was like brought up with if you wanted something you pay for it yourself when I got to a certain age. Yeah, which way is you going? Do you indicate there? Yep. So I think, you know, when I wanted new things I thought, well, I'm going to have to get a job. I'm not entirely sure if my first one was pot washing or if it was the paper round. I had a paper round as well, which was... And you got up for that? It was an afternoon one. <laughs> afternoon paper round. I had a little scooter and I'd like... I remember the first time I put all the papers on the front of it and it fell over forwards. So yeah, no, not like a, not an electric scooter or not a, a moped thing, like a proper push scooter. One of them, yeah, so. Mine was in a refreshment kiosk where at 14, all I was allowed to do was scoop ice cream. But it was good. There used to be like this little cupboard with a telly in and when it was quiet, like, or if it snowed and stuff, we used to just watch Hollyoaks. <laughs> so after that, I then got a Sunday job in the pro shop at Worley Golf Club and I loved it. How it was, old were you then? I think I was like, I was legal then, legal. I was like 16, I think, because I had, I had my moped then. There's a video coming on that as well, that didn't last very long at all and nearly killed me, but I had that. So it was like easy for the head pro there at the time to tell James, go and work Sunday, open up for us. You can jump on your bike and go and open up and it was great for me because I got cheaper golf stuff obviously at the time at 16 playing golf full time it wasn't just about the like kind of couple of quid an hour it was getting golf stuff cheaper and things like that which was really really good and so at 14 as you mentioned I was quite highly paid for a 14 year old I really? like five pounds something an hour that's very highly scoop ice cream that's highly paid for like a 16 year old I think but yeah so the, the, there was that and then my first proper job that I hated I don't know why I left the Sunday job for this, but do you know where I'm going with this? No. I worked at Clinton's Cards in oh, Meadow I did Hall. Know that. And I had to wear like a tie and a it was oh. horrible. This is probably the this is the most embarrassing one. I wasn't there that long. It's posh is Clinton's. I know, but it was like so when people walked in, I'd have to say, 
Hello, how can I help you today? Is it a card or a gift you're looking for? Welcome to Quinton. So that'll probably, like I can see people, that'll be the new thing rather than thought, hopefully not, but yeah, and it was awful. I didn't enjoy it. My manager, my boss, whatever you want to call her, was horrible. Like to the point where I used to have to get the train there because it was Meadow Hall and it was like half an hour away. I don't know why I did it, but anyway, I did it for money, obviously. Um, <laughs> Mum and Dad were quite pleased because I got a job not just like through a mate, I had to go for like an interview and stuff, which good I think, yeah, I think a good progression skills. for any kid, yeah. And so my manager at the time, like the train would get there five minutes after the shift would start or something. I'd know the way of getting there. So I said to her, look, this is the only time I can get here. This was like the first week. Can I start 10 minutes later? The shop still wasn't open. We were just stocking cards and stuff. Then I'll work through my dinner or I'll stay late, like, it's, like I, I'm happy to make that up. Nope, sorry, you have to. I was like, well, what do you want me to do? I can't drive, I can't, I can't take my moped on the motorway. What she wants you to do is get the hour earlier. The, what, the, the first train. Oh. This was my logic, so it was like, it just didn't make sense, so we didn't, we didn't see eye to eye then. And then something else happened, and I just ended up telling her to get... Beep. Yeah, so, um, I just think, uh, as a young person in a workplace, I think you have to have respect for people, which I did. But then, you know, when you see the way someone treats everyone, and you're like, you know what, you're just not a very good manager, you. I think that's yeah, what I told 16, her. That's a bit ballsy. Yeah, but she wasn't. And I, I mean, she might still be there, I don't know. But I remember the lads Mark and Greg who I worked with. Quite, I mean, you, you remember your first workmates, don't you? And it was, it was all right, quite cool. Very embarrassing. You know, when people from school would walk in and you're there. Either you behind, try, yeah, behind the counter or stocking the, the cards up. I got 20% off carte blanche cards though, which was... Still not as much. Still not as reduced as a normal card shop. No, like card factory and stuff like, like that, yeah. Um, so yeah, then... Well, so where did you go from your uh, so I still worked ice at cream parlour? place, but moved to a different location. So when I was 16, I was old enough then to work in the restaurant, handle hot food, yeah. handle hot drinks, things like that. So I worked moved up to the main restaurant and then you'd be sent so to like, like the coffee shop there, or yeah. well i was like i was always on the hot counter always was that like you were the bee's knees yeah there used to be like three of us and if we were on we were like quick service like if you had a on someone would be like get get laura and that or vicky well. why it's not really politically correct is not it them, but you know someone that's we'll a little bit slower <laughs> <laughs> well not as um not as good at the organized job organized and just had a yeah. bit of a routine like when you worked with someone you got on with and like not got on with but you had a nice flow with it yeah like if i heard the next order needed a baguette let's say i'd be like right here's the bit you know and i'd pass it yeah. was just quicker so really you were just really efficient yeah behind the hot food counter and the coffee counter and barista train hot food laws yep <laughs> so if you imagine massive queue and then it's like, I need four lattes, three cappuccinos, one lad, one Oh, lattes. it's like the women at Greg's, isn't it? You know, if they're not very organised and the oh. queue gets massive and you're like, ah, oh. if you're watching from the USA, Greg's is like a yeah. bakery shop where you get coffee and stuff as well. And but. I used to be able, I like learnt the till, like for gra photographic memory. Mm. And I could do it with my, I could play, I knew where stuff was with my eyes closed. Wow. I bet you took, a bit sad. Like, there was a pride in that as well, didn't you? No, but like I worked every Sunday and then it was like every Saturday, Sunday. How many hangovers? Oh, you'll have been 16, so. Oh, no. Loads. Yeah. Yeah. I've laid at the back of um well we'll not say what it was, but yeah. on the floor. Yeah. Because I, I needed to lie down. Well that's very unprofessional from the hot food service counter. <laughs> I once did lavender picking as well. Summer holidays okay. in the village. Uh, there was a big lavender field and the woman who owned it I think it was twenty P twenty P a wrap of lavender if I remember it. Uh, yeah, it was hard, hard work as well, your fingers, I mean, I had hay fever as well, so in there. People say strawberry It was horrible. Because um, you, get, you get paid on the weight. Yeah, and the weight nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I always remember the guys who would go inside to the big house Stop. and, like, crush it up, the lavender, you know, for the oils and stuff like that. They'd be making the big money, they'd be making paper money. Oh. Five, a tenner, 20 quid. So, I remember that well. And then when I started sick form, I think I went back to the golf shop for a bit. Like Saturday job, not just Sunday, but Saturday well, when people were actually there. About golf then. Yeah, then I was thinking like I'm I'll get my eye in, I've got good at this, I want to have a career in it. So that was really when I thought this could be a career. 
Um, and then I just messed around at sixth form, didn't... I got A-levels, but not the grades I wanted to. I don't know how I stayed there, really. Failed the first year and then picked it up in the second, but... Yeah. Then after that, I went to work in a factory called Hesco Bastion, which built bastions and gabions for things like Camp Bastion in Afghanistan and things like that. So, um, my dad was fairly high up in there. He got me the job in the factory. Brother worked there, but it was really, really hard work, but for an 18-year-old, it was really good money. So that's, that's where the car obsession started really, because I was 18 on pretty good money and just throwing it at stupid little hatchbacks. I've got a really good picture of myself in my high vis as well, uh, messing around with one of the boys in there, so I'll put that on the thumbnail for this. Um, but that was, that was a job that made me realise I want to do something I enjoy, I don't want to do something, even if it's for good money, I don't want to do something that I don't enjoy. Yeah. I think everyone has to have that. Like I did two years in that factory, I don't know if I've mentioned, but it was horrible, really hard graft. Yeah. But, yeah, so, what, what were you doing as you were at Sixth Farm? Sixth Farm worked throughout, but then when you were going to uni, you had to do a placement year. Yeah. So that's where, like, I always worked at a lot of the events then, when yeah. I was 16, 17, 18. But in my placement year, I asked if I could go into the events office. All right. Um, but I had to work six months unpaid. To then work six months paid on the I can't I can't believe how something like that's legal. Yeah, so then I used to have to work in the restaurant as well to earn money. Yeah. And then go do like my events. But you know now if they said I mean this might still happen, I bet they call what do they call it when it's free free work? Uh, oh, another one. Another one. Right, we're uh, yeah, back on it. Um I think it's like an internship or an apprenticeship or yeah. like a placement. I, I doesn't but with sit... an apprenticeship you have to like meet the guide like, like you've mm. got work to do haven't you so it has yeah to be that's there. like an educational thing isn't it yeah. like to say oh yeah come and work for free to get it on your seat well i don't know it depends but what you in want in the events but... industry they always say experience over qualification yeah so fair i enough. think everybody just took that and were like right but people take advantage don't they and yeah pay yeah less definitely. And... It's, and it's amazing if you are young and watching this i don't imagine you many people are but if i if you knew i know it's a cliche isn't it but if you knew now if you knew then what you know now about things like that you'd probably but would stand up for yourself a little bit more and try yeah. and... But I think I got to a point where I did. Yeah. So when I got my degree, they offered me a rubbish position mm. on it. And I'm talking like money. Yeah. And that was the point where I, was, I took my pride over everything else. Yeah. And that's when I got a job in a private hospital just as a receptionist. Yeah. Because I thought I need to just get out of that environment mm -hmm. and then I can like search for another job while I do that. Yeah. But that was probably one of the best jobs I had. Hmm. My dad always said to me, he said, it's easier to get a job when you've got a job yeah. than obviously just quit and then don't have a job. So there's another probably cliche for you as well. My favourite cliche, funnily enough, is don't ask, don't get. So like moving through jobs and stuff, don't ask for a pay rise, don't get a pay rise and things like that. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, then I, I was in the factory for two years, like I said. Then I left the factory to start my PGA qualification and work at Tankersley Golf Club. And I went from, I'll not tell you numbers because that's a bit crass, but my wage basically dropped to 10% of what, that's windy, my wage basically dropped to 10% of what I was earning in the factory, so you can imagine that kind of lifestyle shift, apologies if it's windy now, lovely day though, so that was, and you know like when people say like it's easy being in golf and trust me the first few years when you can't teach and you're just doing shop hours and you're earning no money, it's really not. So um, my equivalent to that is going from being paid weekly Yeah. To go into being paid monthly on a salary yeah they say that going salary is probably the biggest mistake you can do in tech because you it's like you've got money every week coming in so you just felt like you had more money yeah when but then you don't like have dragging to dragging it out for the month then you don't have to save it as much do you i suppose no. and be more smart with it yeah. um then did a few years at tankers under ian loved it ian one of the best pros probably in the country to do your training under was really really good uh then moved up to huddersfield and kind of progress through onto what we do now still based at Huddersfield still teach obviously full-time doing the videos and YouTubing and I suppose now we call this channel a bit of a job as well I definitely have it on the CV because of the feedback you guys give us I mean I love doing it I know you enjoy doing it when I'm not taking the mick and not buying stupid things and but you'd be bored without me I know you would so and um, where did you go after the uh... so after the private hospital and I love that people I mean not to go off subject. Can I put you in a nurse's outfit for the thumbnail? No. Because she's a hospital. Right. Um, but that's probably one of the best uniforms I had. Really good pin-like pinstripe suit. Have you got any pictures of you in it? No, I don't no. think I have. 
but they were one of the you know some of the nicest people you'll ever meet yeah in healthcare yeah enjoyed every 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 day i went in and um then i went into hotels yeah and i lasted 11 months hate them really hate hotels right the hotels in the hospitality industry is not for me i mean you've been to disneyland no, that hotel's really Florida. hotel's mint there or is it different well, it's different when you're working in there. Ah, oh, yeah, fair, fair, fair. So that in hotels, I was used to doing like a bit of everything and helping everybody out. Whereas when you're working sales, mm. your job is sales. So like, if we were ever behind on something, I'd be like putting the chair covers on and pouring the champagne or whatever, and they'd be like, "That's not your job." Yeah. And I'd be like, but we're behind. Like, like mm. why would you not just work as a team? So then you're back to hot kitchen law, aren't you? On it. Yeah, but like. That's partly my just personality as well. Like, why would yeah. you not just help someone if you were running behind or like? Mm, I don't understand people who don't do yeah. that, but. But that's what the hotel industry is like. So sales are so against front of house. Front of house is against the kitchen, and it just it wasn't a nice environment. To kitchen. Work in. I don't think kitchens have ever been. I mean, if you're a chef and you're watching, let us know how you get on with banter and stuff. I never enjoyed working in kitchens. I don't know what it was. No. Chefs just. See, the first job yeah. kitchen, everybody got on, we had good nights out, like it was just a different environment. Yeah. Whereas hotels wasn't for me at all. Okay. Uh, and then you moved to work. At the we're golf club. Yeah. And we're going to do a video on how we met, so we're not going to oh. go into that too much because no, I know people want to see that. Of... And you're obviously now at one of the best venues probably in Yorkshire, maybe even in the country. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's mint, so. But I wanted to work for someone that was proud of what they did. Yeah. You know, like the hotels, it's like one in, one out, one in, one out. Like yeah. you'd be getting rid of one wedding. Change those pillows, get them back in. Yeah, well, not that assertive, but <laughs> you know. There we go. But uh, we're just about at the end of our walk. So a lot of people did ask for this video about like job history and stuff. Some quite embarrassing ones. It's not doing another. I haven't, but maybe the ice cream kiosk is where I got my love for ice cream from. Potentially, and maybe the card one is where I got my ice cream flavor. I couldn't care less. Mint chocolate chip. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe the card ones, why I realise that you don't need to buy stupid Valentine's Day cards and things like that, because it's all just a massive money-making scab. You can tell we're filming this just after Valentine's Day. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Laura, what have they got to do? Like, subscribe and comment below with your first Get us to 10,000. Yeah, what is going to happen at 10,000? I don't know, I might change the car again. No, you won't. That'll be in the beat.